Uh, this is a response to an email I got from Venus Coffee. Uh, loyal, fantastic uh, subscriber, and I really appreciate all uh, the comments and emails and uh, support. Um, the, the question is commitment, and what is the role of commitment? Let me see if I can uh, pull up this email. And uh, let's see here. So, uh, do you think commitment is something that the ego wants? Originally, I thought, along with mainstream thinking, that commitment and marriage is part of maturity. Maybe commitment is the ego's way of ensuring security. If, listened, if you listen to Eckhart's talks, he talks about romantic love and commitment in terms of serving the ego's demands. The way he describes it is quite humorous. Deepak Chopra describes falling in love as a spiritual experience, but Eckhart Tolle describes falling in love as an illusion by the ego. Um, what do you think it is? The aspect of being human is tricky to understand. I'd love to know your opinion. Well, once again, thanks for the email and question. Excellent question. And, uh, you know, in our, in our younger years, in my younger years, I was very... I got so wrapped up into, you know, romantic love, this idealized uh, notion of what marriage should be and what relationship should be and what love should be. And uh, a lot of that is dictated by society, by movies, by books, by this feeling of lack that we then look externally to fulfill that void. And one of the first places most people look is uh, the relationship and the committed relationship. And I can never understand the whole notion of um, marriage. I mean, I think marriage is, is, you know, how we as human beings, and I know I'm probably in the minority uh, on this viewpoint, but we as human beings are constantly evolving, changing, and growing. And this notion that whatever, if I'm in my 20s, if I'm, most, let's say most people get married in their 20s, early 30s, and that this, at this age, I can make a lifelong decision and know that um, the person I'm going to evolve and become, and the person that this person is going to involve become, we're going to be on the same path. I mean, there's just really no way to know that, and I can't understand uh, making a lifelong commitment when you don't have all the facts, when you don't know what's what's going to happen, what's going to be. And, you know, a lot of it is just that's what is expected of us as human beings, is to make this commitment, get married, settle down. And I can understand uh, the necessity, if you, I guess, if you're having children, yes, it's important that they have a, a stable family in which to grow up with. But it's evidence. It's clearly evident that it doesn't work uh, by the divorce rate, by the unhappy amount of unhappy marriages. And one of the things that I don't understand is this need we have as human beings is to own or possess the other person. You're mine. You can't, you know, be with anyone else. You can't, uh, uh, I need, <laughs> I need a, a marriage certificate, a government intervention in order to solidify your love for me. And I love what Harry Brown said is that, you know, the person in the relationship he was in, in how I, it's a book, great book, How I Found uh, Freedom in an Unfree World, he says, what I want me to bond, uh, to be my bond with my partner is my love for them. And I don't expect it to be forever. And if that person finds someone else that makes them happier, then... Uh, they should be with that other person. And there's this no longer this need to be control or to feel jealous or to be possessive. And I do believe that this commitment or this idea of marriage is uh, supposedly preventive medicine for the ego from being hurt or devastated. It wants a guarantee that it's going to be remain intact and it's not going to be uh, emotionally harmed. And it wants this false sense of security, which doesn't exist, uh, self-evident by the divorce rate. And so it demands, makes these demands and expectations upon the partner that in reality are unrealistic. Um, further that, when you enter a marriage or of this committed relationship, 
what ends up happening is you eliminate competition um, because there's this feeling that, oh, I have this person, he's my husband, he's my wife, and they're supposed to love me unconditionally and accept me. And so there, when there isn't competition, is as monopolies in business are, are really uh, good examples, you tend to get uh, just poor customer service, high prices, and you, the product suffers. And when there's competition, when you know that this person, you know, if you don't um, deliver your end of the promise in a, in a relationship, that this person can go elsewhere, there's more of a sense of, I'm going to, you know, be a better lover. I'm going to be a better partner because I know that I have to, to, uh, there, there's, this person can leave me. And ironically, this is strange, but um, I, I find that the relationships where the person is jealous, possessive, and wants commitment, wants marriage, it tends to push the other person away. And the, the relationships where the person wants the other person's happiness, and even to the degree that if someone else will make you happier than I can, I want you to be with that person. I think those are the relationships that are la that last. Um, I have a, a good friend who um, was he was married, and his wife said, you know, he was attracted to another woman, and his wife said to him, "Hey, listen, man, if if that's something you feel you need to do and that will make you happy, then then go and do it." And there was no sense, "Oh, you're mine. I'm committed to you. We're married. How could you?" And he ended up fooling around with this other person, and. There was no longer, it wasn't this forbidden fruit, and he ended up, uh, you know, realizing, oh my God, well, you know, what was I thinking? There's, she's nothing like my wife. And it's weird, but the, the more we, the more possessive we become of someone or, or something, we end up pushing them away. So yes, I think the, the need, this marriage or this commitment is, is definitely ego-driven, especially because it's expected upon us from society. And I don't know, I don't know if, if, if by nature we're mon monogamous or not, but I just don't feel like when you put these unrealistic expectations of that you're going to be mine and mine forever, that it really is healthy for the long-term uh, sustainability of a relationship. I think it does more harm than good. Um, naturally, uh, you know, I don't care who it is, but, you know, everybody's attracted to other people, you know, and they're in a committed, loving relationship. It's just part of being human. And it doesn't mean, you know, most most people take it, oh, my God, he or she doesn't love me anymore. She's attracted to another person. I don't know. I don't think that's the case. But more importantly than that is when you become content within, when you become at peace, when you become realize that nothing external can really make you happy eternally you you your dependence on a relationship just diminishes significantly and you end up having healthier more fulfilling relationships because you're not trying to extract from them you're not trying to um, feed uh, or be you know a, a leech <laughs> upon them you're just it's two healthy souls coming together and, and growing together and there's not this societal constraint of you're mine, you're, we're, it's just, it's a moment to moment experience and you know, if people feel they need to and, and want to make a commitment, but, but then by all means they should. But um, I really feel that the ego takes drastic measures which to avoid getting hurt and ironically end up being its own demise. Um, I, hopefully that answers your questions, uh, Venus Coffee. If not, just uh, put a comment and uh, we'll make a, subs a subsequent video. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening.